Hey guys, what's happening? It's Sean 1604 coming at you with an update on our Football Manager's 2012 save with a Celtic. Um, we're currently rendering the save uh, for Osasuna, uh, which I'm uploading at the moment, so if you haven't already checked that out, um, this is the second video that I'm uploading for Osasuna, so, you know, have a look at it. It might not be for yourself if, you know, if you're just interested in the Celtic save, but you might as well have a look at it and see if you enjoy it. Um, so, getting back to the point that we're here for, uh, looking at the Celtic save, uh, the last time we updated you, obviously I apologise for the late updates, it is going to be like that unfortunately now, it'll be once every probably two or three weeks, something round about that, I'll try and get it out more if I can, but that's probably going to be more likely what we're going to be looking at. Um, so where we joined it last time uh, was at the beginning of the season for 2016-17 I think. Um, so we've played half the season, we're just in January now, so uh, we'll update you on the progress of where we are in the cups first of all and we'll let you know where we are in that um, and how we kind of progressed and then we'll go into the transfers and you know the other usual stuff so we'll jump into the results first of all okay so first one I wanted to show you obviously as I said earlier this is a kind of pretty much a six month update um, so I'm not going to go through all the games um, might pick up a few if I'm looking at it and I can remember uh, what happened so or the main ones even um, so this is where we are in the Premier League um, I've lost probably more games this season three uh, up to this point and drew a couple than I had last season I think a lot of that's down to the fact that I was changing the team a lot and I was using a lot of youngsters um, in the games and um, because I was trying to do well in the Champions League which I'll go over in a wee second and we'll explain how we how we kind of progressed in that so this is how kind of results went so we've we've kicked off pretty well you know we've done pretty decent um, I'll probably work backwards and, and just let you know how we've done um, recently not great draw 2-2 um, away uh, from home at Dunfermline obviously not great um, there and um, this week's result though 4-1 at home against Rangers um, you know Gredo, Lanana and Magis who I think I showed in the last video if not we'll go over them in a wee second with, uh, um, when I'm looking at transfers uh, but yeah good result and um I'll show you why again in a wee second. I think that was a good result. Cause Rangers are playing okay this season. Not great, but you know, they're still a, a sort of a force in, in the league. Um and yeah, you know, we had a recent good run of form. The last game we lost was away from home at, at Rangers. Um not a great game. We didn't play well at all. Again, I'm not really sure the um the squad that I used to be honest. Um in fact I think that was a pretty strong strong squad I put out actually and they just didn't perform. So, you know, you can't always explain these things, you know, just not a great result. So that's where we got to in the, the Premier League. I'll just show you the table quickly. Um, so again, we're, we're kind of strolling it. Uh, played 20 games, won 15, drawn 2, lost 3, 47 points. Next team behind is Inverness, Cali Thistle on 39 points. Uh, Rangers away down on 32. As I said earlier, they're still a force to be reckoned with when you play them, but against other teams, they seem to struggle. So, again, just the game, quirks of the game. Um, so yeah, we're we're kind of strolling that what eight points ahead at the moment um, of Inverness, and then the next one's Motherwell, St Johnson Rangers, uh, Beacon, who I think they were the team that came up this season. I can't really remember, but obviously they're struggling um, as you would kind of expect, and um, they probably the team to go down. But looking at it, you know, I'm still happy with this. Um, far enough ahead that I think I'm still going to stroll it. Probably not as much as I did last season, winning it before they even split. This, um, the champions thing sort of split at the end of the season with the last six games but um, I might not win it before that at this time but um, I still think I will easily stroll the league to be honest with you so this isn't really my main focus anymore um, so yeah that's where we are in the league and um, I'll just show you guys now how we got on in the uh, domestic cups because this is how far we have got in the league cup um, so 3-1 away win at Montrose young team played Alec Dewar Pican Kilik and Carlos De Silva all getting on the score sheet. They did get one back at the end, but I wasn't really worried. Um, owned the game, and as I said, that was, this was pretty much an under 19s team that played in this game, so I was quite happy with that. And um, this was a lucky result. 2-2 um, two -two away from Hort Rangers. They played well, I played well. I should have won the game, if I'm being honest, a lot of the chances that we missed. Um, but, you know, Guerrero getting us up and running with two goals early on and then we let in two goals straight after that and then it was a dogfight to the end. I uh, went to penalties, uh, I missed my first penalty, then they missed one, third one, and then we went on to sudden death and I was thinking because I've played a few, um, you know, 
penalties um, in this game and I've lost pretty much all of them so I was thinking oh crap I'm going to lose it but luckily I managed to get through so I'm still in form to hopefully win that. Next I've got Hibernian in the semi-final and that's where we are with the League Cup. That's being played actually this month so we'll see how we go on with that. In the Scottish Cup, um, only played one game so far, um, just recently played that actually in January because obviously we don't really play a lot of games in that until we get to the fourth round so um, easy result 7-0 at home against Kilmarnock who are now in the first division in Scotland uh, owned the game again this was a full team actually played against them just to see how far ahead I was um, and I was quite as I said um, just to see what, how we were kind of working and, and we did we owned the game so Guerrero getting a hat trick Lolana getting a goal M Molo Graf landing um, I just uh, also getting on the score sheet so happy with that um, Champions Cup right let's have a look at this so this was the group that we drew. Um I don't think I showed it on the last um yeah, I don't think I showed it on the last save. Um or the last update, sorry. So um this is the group that we've got Applewell, Olympic Marseille and Juventus. I was quite happy with the group to be honest, and obviously I thought I can beat Applewell twice, which I did. And um, I thought I could maybe pick up some points. I beat Marseille at home for now, which I was really happy with. Up until kind of here, even here I was really happy and then I won that game and I thought right and going into the last game I just needed a draw against Olympic Marseille and um, I would get through and I think if another result went my way I think if Juventus didn't win then we would have went through as well but it didn't turn out that way so this is how the group ended, uh, again losing out on the freaking um last 16 by a point seems to happen every season, it's kind of getting annoying now, this team can't seem to close it out so it's kind of pissing me off to be honest but what can you do um so we got 10 points three three wins juventus i mean it was a good group don't get me wrong you know so but i did beat marcy so i still feel i had enough to go through this group um if i'd played well and um there was just a couple of results um that kind of pushed me off it um i don't know if the um euro cup draw has been made yet i think it might have been let's have a wee look Yes, it has. Sorry, yeah. So we've got Braga um, in the Euro Cup, which isn't played until mid February. So hopefully, I can get through that. I think the next one's pretty easy as well. Um, or not pretty easy, but it's easyish. Yeah. So Sampdoria or Wigan. Um, again, two teams I should be beating. So I would hope that I could at least get through again. Um, again, make a run. Hopefully, at the um, at the the final for this. The main team is going to be coming up against really are Arsenal. Um, who are still in it. Um, not really anyone else that I'm that scared of, to be honest with you, looking at that. Athletic and Madrid have beat ones, I think. Chelsea are actually still in it, I didn't notice that. So, obviously Man City as well. So, there are actually three big um, English teams still in there. And um, But everyone else, apart from the English teams, I seem to struggle against the English teams, but every other team um, I seem to be okay against. So, I'm pretty confident of beating anyone else aside from the English teams. So, hopefully they might get put out. I might get lucky. Um, and they might lose one of their games so I can hopefully progress and start winning some of the Euro Euro Cups because I've, as I've shown um, the domestic cups including the league are not that hard for me anymore which is kind of annoying the only thing I really got is the European Cup which is one thing I will mention um, I tried playing a separate team essentially in the Premier League and playing a separate team in the Champions Cup because obviously as you can see there's not a lot of difference like three days between the games I thought and it did affect me in, in the game um, when I played you know not a lot not a full team all the time um, and you know it affected the way I think it affected the cohesion of the squad because when I done that that's when I kind of lost the league uh, or lost the, the Champions Cup games or the Champions League games um, I, I, you know away from home and stuff so I think I have to the players have the fitness and I just keep I don't know why I think I'm just worried about injuries and stuff so I think I need to let the team play and maybe just make one or two changes rather than four or five or six changes um, which is what I was doing I think I'm affecting the cohesion of the squad it's just something that I think may have happened and I, I think I'm going to change next season um, try and keep the squad pretty much the same and then just make a few changes if I need to if someone needs a rest because I think the guys do have the fitness to play in, in all the games if, if I'm being honest um, and that's pretty much where we are at the moment with the results and um, as I said what we'll do now is we'll quickly jump on and have a look at the transfers and um, see if there's anything that we've not updated 
Okay, so this is the uh, transfer screen. I've had a quick look on my previous video and I'm not 100% sure what I've shown and what I've not. Um, I think I was on the 1st of July, so I'll kind of run anything after that and just show you, you know, what we got in. Um, I'm going to assume I showed these three uh, coming in, which I think I did. Um, and then we got Dick Midges, who was a free agent. Uh, he left his club and I thought, why not three and a half star four potential? Uh, didn't have to pay for him. Not really high wages. Good to have as a backup to Molo. Um, you know, always, and he's played well. He scored seven goals. You know, he's he's played well as well, which I think is good. Um, and he's shown kind of some promise as well. So you know, good to bring him in and see what he can do. I mean, he's a bit older than my youth team as well, so um, he's kind of ready to play at the moment. Uh, brought in Yosef Sindelar on loan from Sunderland. I actually tried to buy this guy, but they weren't like willing to sell him. Uh, so I thought I'd bring him in on loan and just have him there because he's got good finishing and again a backup really. And um, probably not going to play that much. Um, already showed this guy coming in, Vinicius. Um, he's away on loan to Ostend, which I'll go over in a wee second. And um, Vincente Zapatero. Oh. That shows what happens. Uh, Zapatero, uh, Rodriguez. Um, what just popped up there was YouTube because I was uploading a video for us as soon as, in case you're wondering. Um, but yeah, and um, this guy brought in for 1.2 million defensive mid. Um, again, he's only 17, so I was looking at ways I could where I could strengthen and what I wanted to bring in, and this guy was available. So I thought good stats, and you know, it might be good. He's only 17. Um and what else did we get? Ricard Martos uh, on a free. Uh, this guy looks as if he could be a bloody good player. More than three and a half star in my opinion because his stats look really really good. He's a good left midfield and striker and full. Um, he can play both of them great and um, I think he looks like a really quality player just looking at him and um, you know we'll see how he gets on. I didn't need a work permit or anything which is good so. You know, bring him in, didn't he pay for him? Um, Joe Schultz on loan from Sunderland. I don't know. I was kind of oh, sorry, Southampton, but I was kind of panicking, ha not having a right midfielder really, and I thought, oh, I need somebody in just as a backup in case I need them. But he's probably not going to play, if I'm being honest. I, again, this was a guy I tried to buy, and I couldn't buy him because they wouldn't let him sell him, and blah blah blah. But anyway, um, Jan Lucas Dietz, four point three million from um, what was that from? Achen? I don't even know. Um, where did they play? Second division in Germany. That's quite a lot of money actually. But anyway. Um, so I needed a right back and um, this guy kind of fit the bill. It's if he was a good player um, with his stats and I had the money so I thought, you know, why not splash, splash the cash a wee bit, see what we can do with him. And um, you know, I thought he was a good player to bring in. Um, Sabahattin Onur. Again, can't say the name. Uh, 3.6 million defensive uh, central defender. Um, again, good stats, and I just needed a wee bit of cover there, um, so I thought I'd bring him in. Um, Luis Predaza, Perdaza. Uh, I needed a youth striker with good finishing uh, to bring up through the youth squad. I kind of looked at my youth squad, and a few of the players have came through now and either been sold or not brought onto the first team. and. I was looking to see what I needed uh, for the next few years, so uh, again, this is just a sign in for the future. Uh, Emery Can on loan from Man U. He's played a few games, played, in fact, he's played one game, played alright, he actually played really good. Um, I didn't ask to loan him, they just sent him on loan because I don't think he was really playing very well or doing very much in the Man U team. I think he was actually causing hassle, so they sent him on loan to me because I'm an affiliate, but yeah, so um, got him in. And lastly, Tim Crew. Um, I needed a senior goalkeeper. My my oldest goalkeeper was like twenty one or something, and um, I wasn't really happy with that. And I wanted a bit more experience, um, so I thought, you know, why not bring him in? He probably will start, to be honest. Um, and Alan Alnick Alnwick, it will be his kind of backup. Um, we'll go over the, the outgoings, and you'll see why he'll be the backup. Um, I think we're about here. So Kasama went on loan. Kevin McCormick went on a free. Um, not really too much. These are all loans. Um, I'm probably going to be at the point where I need to sell these guys that have went to a stand because I can't get the bloody work permit thing to work. Freddie, oh, who was it? I think it was Freddie Barrio. She's been at this club. He's been on loan for four years. That's no, not him. Who is it? There's one of them that's been on loan for four years. I think it might be Melo. Let's have a look. Yeah, Melo, this is his fifth season on loan to a stand and it only should take three. Okay, to get a work permit, but because it's accumulative, 
Oh, sorry, it's continuously you need to be on loan. Um, I can't figure out how to do it. I think I need... To, I'm going to try this season, and this will be my last time. If I can't do it this season when they come back, I'll just be selling the players, because there's no point in keeping them if I can't get the body work permit thing to work. It's so annoying. It has to be continuous and not just accumulative. Um, but yeah... Um, I'm going to try and send them on loan again as soon the day they come back to the squad um, and see if that works and see if that gets them continuous um, in Belgium for the for the work permit. Tried to sign this guy again obviously and they didn't get the work permit so yeah. Anyway, um, that's something for me to try and worry about. I've tried to look into it and it's apparently it's a bit of a bug in the game and doesn't work right and blah 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 and hopefully it'll be fixed in the FM13 which is coming out soon. Um, but you never know, you know, we'll, we'll have a look at that uh, when that time comes. Um, main ones here, you'll probably have already seen them, um, unless I've zoomed in when I've edited this, I don't know whether I will or not, because uh, I've not really got the time, but um, Adam Matthews went for four and a half million to uh, Bolton, uh, coming to the end of his contract and he was kind of moaning, wasn't wanted to go to a bigger team and blah blah blah, and he, if I'm being honest, didn't really play that well for me, which I was surprised by because he was classed as a wonder kid. And the wages he was wanting was too high. In fact, I'd tell you the reason why I sold this guy because, and why I sold the other guy, which I'll show you in a second. When I was trying to sign them to contracts, they were wanting release clauses of like 1.2 million to foreign clubs, 1.5 million. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Like, seriously, you want me to put that on a contract? Like, you want that little, um, you know, to get away? Why would they do that? And then you can just leave for like 1.2 million. Um, so. This was a, more of an annoyance sale at this old time. I actually tried to sign Prestia into a new contract, couldn't get him because he was wanting to do exactly the same thing. AC Milan, I mean, this guy's a quality defender, don't get me wrong, he's a quality defender, um, played well for me, and he is a really, really good guy, he's a really good defender. Um, but, you know, he, he had to go, he was again wanting like a 1.2 million release clause or something, and I was just like, no, on you go, 7.5 million, I'll take that, or 7.75 million AC Milan, you know, it's a good good markup for me for the fact that I think I brought him in, I think on a free, or no, 1.4 million, so I made 6 million off the guy, um, so yeah, I'm happy with that, and I spent the money, you know, on this side, I've still got like 5 million to spend as well, which I'll show you in a second. Um, Darko Fatina going out on loan for a hundred grand. Uh, Umberto Musco, he's going to be one of the main guys for us hopefully in the future, and going on loan for three hundred and seventy-five grand, and obviously a few loans. And then Lucas Veronzi, um, didn't wasn't coming on, and I thought he was coming to the end of his contract, and I didn't want to keep him, so I thought I'd get some money in six hundred and fifty grand for him. So yeah, that's where we are. Um, I did manage to sign a few players to extended contracts, and. Um, I'll show you who they are. Keith Grafland, um, I don't think he was wanting the actual release clause thing, so I was quite happy to sign him into a 22.5k a week uh, deal. Uh, main player, obviously. Connor Clifford, um, again, signed him into a long term deal. Um, again, I think he's a quality player, he's played really well for us. Been injured actually this season uh, a wee bit, so, uh, but again, I was happy to get him in, keep him on a contract. Um, who else did we get? I think we got. Let's just see if we can make that a bit bigger. Bottle size. There we are. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we are. Um, Alvin Arundel, that was another one I got him in. Um, he was actually one of the guys who wanted to get like a 1.2 million release clause, and I found a kind of way around it by giving him a big, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Joining sort of bonus thing or whatever you call it, and by paying his agent a lot of money, um, that was the only way I could really get his release clause up. So I got up to 15 million, um, which I think is good. And the relegation clause doesn't really apply because I'm not going to get relegated, uh, but yes, he's on 30 grand a week, 15% wage rise a year is pretty high as well. But you know, you need to pay to get the best, I guess. Um, and I was quite happy to keep him, he's my main sort of central mid uh, central defender now since, um. Since uh, this year left, uh, Johan Moll, I think I signed this guy. I think I actually put, well, so then this guy, he's like a main player for me as well. But yeah, I think I signed him into a longer team, term deal as well. Um, his contract actually doesn't, ex in fact, it's only I, I didn't actually, his contract doesn't expire until 2020. So 
he's with us for another three years, um, which I think we'll probably by that time that'll be his best years and hopefully I'll be able to keep him, but I don't know, I don't know, we'll keep him and see how it goes. And, and then a few of the youth team players have managed to sign into some longer term teams as well, so that's where we are with, this, with the team. Um, just obviously these are going to be long updates, so if you manage to stick with me through this I do appreciate it. Um, because I'm doing 6 month updates now they are going to be fairly long, um, probably 15-20 minutes when I'm doing them. Um, so yeah, if you are happy with it, comment, rate, subscribe below and um, thanks a lot for your time. If you've got any questions please post them. Next update will probably be the end of the season, we'll let you know how everything's kind of ended up. But thanks for watching guys, cheers, bye.